Okay. Coin. As you can see, we got our prototype built and looking forward to testing it. We'll show you here in a minute. Chargecoin is a revolutionary new blockchain based technology which seeks to replace the credit card for purposes of transactions. Our specific niche is in electric vehicles right now. This allows for us to automatically turn on an electric vehicle or anything else requiring of time or electricity in order to function. So on the left you should see the database and on the right you should see the app. There it goes. Demonstrating this in practice. So Tyler has just turned on and authorized the transaction to go through and now we are sending the charge station owner charge coin in exchange for his station's charging time. So what's really cool about this is the do-it-yourselfer can start their own business and when this box turns on they can begin to accept charge coins which we've seen 75 amps going through to this charger and we can verify the authenticity of this transaction on the Ethereum blockchain so you can see for yourself that this is for real and that we are going to take the world by storm with this new technology. Enjoy charging your electric vehicle. These are really the only tools you need to start finding yourself in a position where you are leasing out electricity for ChargeCoin. And that's so exciting to me because we have built a basic kit which we expect the community to expand upon to turn into complex kits. Um, things that we never even imagined can be done when you connect money to electricity in a decentralized fashion. Um, safety first, guys. I always have to say this, um, unfortunately, but you guys, anytime you dabble into electricity, there's a risk of death. There's a risk of severely hurting yourself and that's why there are professionals so please seek a professional if at all you're uncomfortable but the basic rule of thumb is if you bought it at the store and you're putting two two parts together that you bought at the store you're fine until you start connecting things that you didn't buy at the store okay you start connecting into live electricity that's when you start really just get an electrician don't risk it guys we don't want to hear the stories okay we don't want to have to hear the stories. Um, there are three basic components in the, in the most basic charge station. There's the node, which is a computer, just like a Raspberry Pi. There's the relay, which is just like a switch, which is actually controlled by the node. And there's the rectifier, or it's like an AC to DC converter, just like a cell phone um, charger. Right now, Dan is hooking up the bottom or out flow of the electricity which will go outside and you saw outside what we had installed a standard j1772 or you can do the european equivalent it doesn't matter guys these kits are universal everywhere in the world and um yeah it's it's really all about do it yourself we are a do it yourself community we are a community that that's expecting um you guys to to share with us your creations whether they're exact copies of this or whether you've decided to expand upon it, which we are ourselves doing with the Powerwall hybrid AC-DC charger, which will charge up an electric car just fast like a Tesla supercharger, but without the need for all that expensive hardware. Um, so in the spirit of this, I can't talk about it enough because it really is what makes me most excited about the Charge project. Um, the hardware and the software are designed to be a simple, um, baseline thing on foundation on which to stand wherein you guys can create and share and create and share so keep on creating and sharing um, software and hardware we could not thank you enough for participating a couple of more safety items the electricity is loving those that exposed metal those copper exposed metal Dan actually could have done a little better job there of reducing the exposed metal. Um, same thing with these nuts he's putting on the end of the wires. Um, no such thing as not enough when you're trying to reduce the amount of electricity um, that could touch. So get that exposed electricity out of the way, tape it up whenever possible, and consult your electrician at the end. We use a thick, thick 
gauge wire for electric vehicles because electric vehicles um, can cause a fire if you use thin gauge. So keep that in mind and look in the description, read that carefully, what gauge thickness of wire you should use. We're about ready to turn it on for the first time. We're looking for some blinking lights to verify that everything worked correctly once we've turned it on, which looks like it's a go. Very exciting. Guys, the only thing stopping you truly from becoming your own entrepreneur, your own do-it-yourselfer, is to get started. So what are you waiting for? You have the power to buy these affordable parts and get started assembling it, have an electrician check off the very end. You can make it happen. Hello, I'm Jeremiah Laney, and today I'll be talking about the control system that will be put in place in order to control EV chargers in a variety of different circumstances. The control system is made up of three different parts, one being the relay. What this does is it acts like an electronic light switch. It allows us to quickly turn on and off power remotely to the EV charger or other different devices without having to actually be there. If we look quickly at how it is set up, the wires in the top with the squiggly lines are the lines in, and the wires at the bottom with the squiggly lines are the lines out. Those would be our 220 power going to the EV charger or to the 220 outlet that we would be controlling. Off this, we're pulling two legs of power into our power supply. So we have 220 coming in. Our onion cannot use 220. What our onion needs is five volts. So what this power supply does is it works anywhere from 110 to 240, and it steps down the voltage so that we could use it on our onion. So in this case, it's stepping it down to five volts, then we're pulling our power off of that to the onion. The onion has a breakout board on it just for ease of use for us, which controls an on and off switch so you can manually toggle on and off and has an LED on board so that you can see if it's getting power or not, which is a quick visual indicator of what the system's doing. On top of that, the onion acts as the main control board for the entire system, so or the brain. So it connects to the wireless, it allows the app to connect to the system, and it controls the relay. So without this, the whole system would fail to function. So what the onion actually does is on the breakout board, we have GPIO 11 going over to the relay, which you can see right here, and ground going over to the relay as well. And what that does is that actually allows the onion remotely to turn on and off the relay so that we don't have to be at the system. This is the brain of the system, and this is how the control for the system work. All right, so we've got one of the most basic charge station setups, but it's also quite powerful. And so I'm gonna break down what, what may be somewhat complicated to some. Some might already be seeing how simple it is just from looking at this. Um, but basically, it's got a power in, guys, and it's got a power out. The power out is the charging station in this case. Um, but basically, that is all there is to it as far as the uh, power in and power out goes. You'll see there's, there's uh, in this case, there are four wires coming in. One is green, one is white. We're actually not even using the white, so I'm capping it off. So just ignore that one. The greens, as is with the light switch, all the greens in the box go together. Green going in, green coming out all together, and then the, the box itself being grounded. So that demystifies quite a few already. Um, again, we've got the red coming in, we've got the black coming in. Each of those is one leg. So this is, um, in this case, it's 120 volts per leg. It'll be different depending on what country you're in, but the principles remain the same. And then we've got the AC to DC converter for our Onion Omega uh, computer right here, our node. And so this is basically just jump right over. We've got the red going to red and black going to black. 120 per leg going in and your 5 volt DC coming out and going around and into um, the Onion Omega computer or node. And so um, this DC, AC to DC converter is no different actually than a cell phone charger. Um, and you can actually use a cell phone charger on a separate circuit, which would require one more leg. Um, pretty simple, basically you just have an outlet that you would plug into, but we've chosen to install it all in one end of this box, but mostly to make a nice clean look after all said and done. So it just, if, you if, we're, if I were to close this box, it would look really pretty. So anyway, you got your hot coming in. It's being controlled by the relay, which the relay itself is being, being controlled by this computer. Um, red goes to red over here. And so this is normally cold unless the computer turns it on, and then, and then it becomes hot. Or, or um, And so the, 
the red going to red turns on, black going to black turns on. That's why we've got this special relay we've got for sale on the Charge Coin website. Um, which allows for both of these legs to turn on at the same time and turn on slowly so it doesn't damage any of the equipment uh, downstream of it. So I pretty much demystified it again. You've got your, your uh, ground, which all the greens basically just go together, this one being an extra wire. You got your, your red in, your black in, and you got your jumpers going through, uh, powering that 5 volt DC, which itself is the uh, onion omega which itself powers that that relay and the relay turns on and off quite simple you guys hello i'm jeremiah landy and today i'm going to be talking about taking the components we have and adding them into a pre-built box or as some people know them as rv boxes which can be found at home depot or lowe's what pre-built boxes come with is circuit breakers which is shown right here we're using 220 breakers and they're tied together. Typically the lines run directly from there right to the outlet, which is a 220 outlet. What they typically have as well is a neutral rail, which is represented by this white rail, and a green rail, which is represented by this grounding rail and grounds the box. What we're looking to add is our components in the middle of this. So we're looking to add a relay right here. And what that does is that acts as a giant remote light switch and allows us to turn the power on and off via the onion, which I'll get to in a second. So what we have here is we're pulling two legs of power off, represented by this red wire and the black wire to our power supply. So what this power supply does is it steps down to 220 volts to five volts, represented right here. That comes out and it gets fed into our onion, which we have plugged into a breakout board for ease of use. What that onion then does is that allows us to take that voltage and pass it back in the relay. The relay then is switched on and off. So what we're doing is we're passing it through GPIO 11 into the relay, which completes a circuit, closes that, allows power through. The onion acts as the brain of all of this or the control center. What that allows us to do is it allows us to connect the device to a wireless network so that then we can log on to it from a computer or other system. But most of all, it allows us to connect through the cloud with our app so that we're able to tell the device to turn on power and start metering it so when people plug in their cars to the electrical vehicle charger, we're then able to monitor it and collect coins for that use. Components into a solution that has multiple voltages or multiple outlets. This could be an RV box that has a GFI component to it or an outlet, or if you're looking to add this into your home circuit breaker panel, more than likely you have multiple voltages, maybe supplying a refrigerator that's 220 and the rest of your house that is not. So looking at this diagram, I have a 220 breaker here that would typically have lines running straight to the 220 outlet. I have the components already added, which I'll go back and cover in a minute. Our 220 outlet is also pulling a line from the neutral rail and a line from the ground rail. What we also have is another breaker here, that's our 110 breaker supplying typical house voltage. So we have that running to this outlet down here. What makes this scenario so special is that if you do have a GFI outlet, you would be making the rest of the system GFI protected that we will be installing. The reason being is that we're pulling a hot off of that outlet to our power supply. So if this outlet pops, then it would shut down the entire system. So if somebody got water on the outlet, or it got wet, or they had a extension cord plugged into it running to something that fell in water, or any number of scenarios, then it would shut down the entire system, thus providing GFI protection quick and easy. So what we have is we're pulling our hot off of the outlet to our power supply up here, and a neutral supplying 110 to our power supply. Our power supply can actually run anywhere from 110 to 240, so we're well within its running capabilities. It's dropping the voltage down to five volts, supplying that to our onion, which our onion then is taking the commands from our phone and allowing the device to connect wirelessly to a network that's close by. And the onion then is allowing the relay, which is acting like a light switch in this scenario, allowing the RV charger to be turned on or off, from our phone or another remote device. Um, the Onion is doing that by the 11 GPIO and the ground GPIO. So what makes this scenario so novel is that 
you're pulling off a lower voltage, you're running off a GFI outlet so that you're able to have the components and this scenario with some GFI protection. And you're just doing this so that if you had a normal wall outlet, you're not pulling off of so high a voltage, you're pulling off a lower voltage into the power supply, which brings a little less risk. However, we always recommend having an electrician do the work.